Hi, this is a quick video in preparation for paper two of the computer science exam. Uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to go over the, the main topics that are included in paper two. Notice there's no information for paper two, unlike paper one. Also look at some of the common misconceptions and mistakes that students often make uh, in the questions of this topic. There's also a few warmer questions. You must have a pause the video and have a go at answering a few questions on your own. So topic 2.1, algorithms. First thing to know is you've got to understand the three key things about uh, computational thinking, abstraction, decomposition, and algorithmic thinking abstraction. This is when we look at uh, problems from a different view and maybe remove lots of the detail from them. Decomposition is where we break problems down into smaller parts. Often these will end up as uh, functions or procedures in your code. Uh, algorithmic thinking, this is where we uh, use the three constructs of selection, iteration and sequence and the sort of operators and different things to form an algorithm to solve problems. Uh, in terms of designing, creating, refining the algorithms, you know, you've got to be aware of all of the symbols for flowcharts. You've got to be able to write things in pseudocode if asked. Uh, and if the questions require it to sort of answer your algorithm questions using either the reference language or high level programming, strongly suggest that you stick to Python uh, for your answers in these. You've got to be able to identify common errors in code and understand the difference between syntax and logic errors. Syntax errors being those where there is something wrong in the way the, the code's been formed, you missed out a speech mark or something. Logic is where the program will run, but the outcome will not be as you would expect. You've got to know about the uh, the standard algorithms for searching and sorting. Obviously, um, you don't have to be able to program these from scratch, but you do need to be able to understand how they work so you could step through them and show some examples of what the data would do as you run through these algorithms. You may sort of be asked to give in some code and be able to identify the difference between them. So let's have a look at a couple of quick questions on this topic. So this is a question on decomposition and structure charts. Structure charts, so you've got to look at the uh, different features that are required of a program in the boxes A to H and work out where they would go in the uh, structure chart here. So pause the video for a second and then come back to me uh, when you've done and I'll go through the answer. Okay, so let's have a quick look at the answer to this one. Uh, what we've got is the three features of adding the background, the text and the dimensions. They are sort of top level features, whereas the other features below, they belong to either the set dimensions or the add uh, text feature in there. So that would be the answer for this. Okay, go have a go at this uh, question as well now. So this is looking at flowcharts and what the output would be for various inputs. So once again, pause the video and I will come back to you with the answers in a moment. Here we go. So as you look through the program, you're inputting the A and the B, looking at the values. First of all, 1411 is A less than B over here in this condition. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's A less than B. No, it's not. So we're going to take the false option to allow that put A plus B, which is the 25, and then repeat the algorithm for the other inputs that you've got there. As I said, the other thing you'd need to be able to do is to be able to recognize uh, the different algorithms for searching and sorting. Um, here's a quick question then on two algorithms here. Which algorithms do we think is which here? We've got a linear, linear or a binary search. So once again, pause the video, have a go. Okay, so the first one here is the linear. How do I know that? Essentially, it's this part here where we've got a counter that's counting up and it's going through, starting at zero, going all of the way through all of the various items that are in there. And it's searching to see if the thing we're looking for is in the list. And if so, uh, it'll exit the while loop. Whereas over here in the binary search, and what we've got is we've got to the well we've got items that give it away a little bit we've got some midpoints and upper and lower bounds um, and the first thing we're doing is sort of finding the midpoint uh, and then we're checking to see which side of the list we're going to go if we haven't found the item we're looking at 
Good site for this is linking, a uh, good link here, algorithms at the BBC Bite Size. If you just type that in, um, you'll find them. So you need to know about the linear and the binary search. You need to know about the merge sort, the bubble sort, and the insertion sort. Lots of good information on BBC Bite Size on those. Next, we've got to know lots about uh, programming. I'm not going to go through all of this. Uh, remember the names of the constructs, though, that we've talked about previously, sequence, selection, and iteration, words that we don't always use in class that, but could come up in uh, the paper. Got a whole bunch of operators over here that we should know most of them, but the ones that may be a little bit different are the mod, the diff, and the exponent. Uh, in Python, um, the mod is used by the percent symbol, the div, uh, where well, we get the whole part of division, uh, mod being the, the remainder. Uh, the, the div is two forward slashes and exponent. We're racing to the power is two asterisks in Python. Obviously, you've also got to learn all about the different sort of things like file operators and SQL, as well as the other programming. Here's a good example of some code using the mod and the div operators. They often come up in questions to do with things like this, where you're looking at time or you're doing things with decimals or maybe sort of working out if things are true or false. Okay, uh, we've got a, a quick question for you here on SQL for to try. There's a table there. Um, how would you find using SQL all of the fruits that are red and I'd like the fruit name and the fruit color in the results. So see if you can work out the SQL statement to perform that operation, that search. Pause the video and I'll give you the answer in a second. Okay, so we remember for SQL, we've got the select from and where clauses that we need to know about for the, the commands to do searches. Select is followed by the either the asterisk, meaning all fields, or a list of the fields separated by commas. So the equivalent of that asterisk could be select fruit name, comma, fruit color. Then we have the from clause, which tells us the name of the table we need to go to. And then we have the the where part and that is followed by a criteria of how the search will sort of be performed in this case the colors of the fruits that are red so we would get apple red and strawberry red back in our search criteria uh, search results for that okay defensive programming we need to know a bit about sort of how we can write code um, that will work well um, and anticipate misuse um, things like authentication, using usernames and passwords. Um, we think, need to think about the maintainability of programs, about how we use sub-programs, i.e. procedures and functions. Procedure being looking very much like a, a function that doesn't return a value, a function being a sub-program that returns a value. Not something we have to worry too much about in Python is indentation, because it's part of the spec and part of how Python works. But um, if you use a language that doesn't follow that, then good indentation makes your code much easier to read. Commenting is really important to help people understand how our code works. Okay, we're two types of testing, iterative and final. This was a question that came up in your mock. So iterative is when you're testing all of the time as you're developing your program. And then you have your final testing, which is like your kind of acceptance test at the end. If you're sort of uh, looking for test data we have different types we have normal boundary and invalid so normal being uh, i don't imagine we're looking for numbers between one and ten so six would be a normal value boundary would be at the, the lower end and the top end and invalid would be out of the the range that we're looking for or perhaps even a different data type so we need to know all about Boolean logic. We need to know about the and, the or, and the not gate. And we've got to be able to create some truth tables. Uh, make sure if you're sort of asked to sort of do, write the inputs for the truth tables that you try and do them in the correct order of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, because that will probably be how they will be specified in the mark scheme for the examiner. Um, what else do we need to know? Last little bit is about um, programming languages and the development environments that we kind of use 
when we're when we're writing our code. Two types of programming languages that we need to know about: high level languages and low level. So high level is our things like Python and other programming languages like C sharp, Java, etc. Low level languages, though, these are things like assembler and machine code that have been designed specifically for a single processor. They follow the instruction set for that given processor, whereas high level languages should be able to sort of be translated to work on different um, system architectures. So we've got different um, translators that we can use to convert our programs from high level or low level languages into machine code. Uh, we have the compiler and the interpreter. Um, the compiler is a program that will take your source code and convert it all at once into machine code, whereas an interpreter will interpret the, your source code a line at a time. Um, we need to know about IDEs, inter integrated development environments. We've used REPL quite a lot, which is a good example of this. Uh, Visual Studio, maybe you've seen before, is another example of an IDE. Um, offer a whole bunch of different features, primarily a text editor to allow us to uh, add code to our programs. As you run the program, uh, you can get errors and you can use the call, to call the translators directly from within the IDE. So what else can it do? Um, well, here's an example of a REPL that we've seen before. We've got some things here such as syntax highlighting, whereas the color of the code changes depending on what it is. So we've got strings here uh, in brown, and we've got keywords like def and return for this function here in blue. Other things that we can kind of have, oops, other things that we could have are things like a debugger. This is a part of the program that would allow you to run your code and pause it with breakpoints as the code is running. So you can view the value of your variables and see what's happening in your program as the 